We'll now move away from uh, variable selection and we're going to talk about one regularization method that is called ridge regression. In ridge regression, we are not selecting variables, but this will be important to introduce uh, the next regularization method, lasso that selects variables. So let's consider the usual linear regression problem where I have p predictors uh, to, est to, to predict the outcome y. And in classical linear regression, the way of obtaining estimates for these uh, predictors would be to uh, minimize the residual sum of squares, uh, and the solution of that minimization problem would be the estimates for the betas. So I have represented here uh, the residual sum of squares. So you see here the outcome y minus the predicted uh, value for y uh, given the the fitted line. Okay. So I want to find uh, the betas, beta 0 and the, the beta j's that minimize this residual sum of squares. So you know that the solution for this problem is called uh, ordinarily squares. And in the case of linear regression, uh, the ordinarily squares is also the maximum likelihood estimator. It coincides it's exactly the same thing. So maximizing the likelihood or uh, um, just looking for the ordinarily squares, you, you get exactly the same uh, solution. And for this reason, uh, because it's the maximum likely, likelihood estimator, uh, this estimator is the best linear unbiased estimator. Okay? This means that among the possible unbiased estimators that you could compute for, for beta or, or you could propose for beta, uh, the OLS achieves the minimum variance. So it's called a, a best linear unbiased estimator, a blue estimator. So what happens is sometimes, despite being the best linear unbiased estimator, there are situations where the, the, uh, the OLS uh, uh, estimate is high variance. And you're familiar with this problem when we have in the linear regression high collinearity between the predictors, meaning high correlation uh, uh, among the predictors, or when the number of predictors uh, P is of similar magnitude to the number of observations, the ordinarily squares still is an unbiased estimator, but it's highly unstable. It gives you, it's going to give you high a high variance, or if you want, a high standard errors. Okay, and in those situations, it's very it's very hard to trust on those on those estimators, is exactly because they are very unstable. So, uh, several decades ago, uh, this method bridge regression was proposed to deal with this problem by using the idea of trading bias for variance. You might recall that the mean square error of an estimator, it can be decomposed in two parts, the variance of the estimator uh, plus the square of the bias of that estimator. Okay, So in the case of uh, maximum likelihood estimator that is going to be unbiased, this term is going to tend to zero and the mean square error is really dominated by the variance. So what we're going to do is to use this uh, idea of trade-off between bias and variance. And by allowing some bias, if we decrease a lot of the variance, we might actually get a, a better mean square error than the one we uh, obtain with uh, the, the blue estimator with the OLS. So this trade-off in the case of bridge regression is achieved by adding to the residual sum of squares a, what is called a penalization term which is not more than uh, the, the sum of the, the square of the betas uh, and uh, weighted by this tuning parameter lambda. And this tuning parameter is going to really to define uh, the amount of penalization. And you can see here if the lambda is zero, you get, uh, you get the OLS solution. Uh, if the, the, the lambda is very high, this is going to dominate uh, the minimization problem of this, of this expression. So um, the idea geometrically um, is the following. Suppose that we have we just have two beta parameters. With more more parameters, it would be hard to to represent it uh, graphically. So I have here the representation or, or the projection, if you want, of the likelihood function. Okay. So these are the the level curves of the likelihood function. So the, it goes it goes up into you know it looks more or less a maybe a bell-shaped uh, three-dimensional uh, curve. Uh, and the maximum likelihood estimator is found at the top of that surface, right? It's going to be the likelihood, so it's going to be the, the maximum likelihood. 
So in this case, that would be uh, the, the point indicated in, in the figure. And again, as I said, this maximum likelihood estimator is also the ordinary of squares. So the idea of uh, ridge regression is that rather than maximizing the likelihood or getting the maximum in likelihood, I'm going to get the maximum of, of, of the likelihood subject to a constraint. Okay, so I'm going to say that I want to maximize this function still, the likelihood function, but the sum of the, the, the squares of the betas cannot be uh, larger than this circle here. Okay, so I'm placing uh, a, a restriction in the maximization problem um, that corresponds to saying that beta 1 square plus beta 2 squares is less than a certain quantity. Okay, so uh, this this restriction is equivalent to adding uh, a term a term to the residual, residual sum of squares so again we'll try to find uh, the maximum of this function but the solution has to be within this circle and they can as you can see in the image the solution would be exactly there in the border of the, the circle and touching the likelihood so that point there would be you know for beta 1 and for beta 2, the reach estimator um, for this problem. So how do we choose the amount of penalization? How do we choose the parameter lambda? As we said, lambda controls the amount of penalization. So we might not penalize at all with lambda equals to zero, or we can penalize a lot. So how do we choose how much penalization we want to add? Well, what, what we can do is to try different values of lambda. So really look, doing a grid search, and for uh, uh, each one of those uh, values for lambda, we will fit the, 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 the model with that value and we'll compute the mean square error using cross-validation. And the lambda that achieves the, uh, the smaller mean square error is the lambda that we're going to use as penalization. Okay, so using always the same idea uh, of uh, evaluating the performance of the model. So let's go to the example that we've uh, used before um, with the FAT data set where we have 14 uh, uh, predictors that are anthropometric measurements and we, these predictors we want to uh, predict body fat calculated by the Brozek formula. So the, the outcome is this Brozek uh, variable. So what we're going to do is to fit several linear models, always using 14 predictors, but varying the amount of, of penalization, so varying the, 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 the value of lambda. We're going to use this GLMnet package that implements, uh, among other things, ridge regression. The GLM package, package uses uh, its own syntax, so we have to define the, the, the matrix, the design matrix, which is basically the, the predictors for, for the model. Uh, I have to define the Y, that is going to be the outcome. And then I'm going to ask to find the lambda using cross-validation GLMnet and I'm going to give a grid search between um, minus three and eight in the log scale, because that's, that's how uh, the package works. It's with the log scale of lambda um, uh, by um, a gap of 0.1. So on the right side, I have uh, computed the mean square error for the, val for the model with the 14 predictors using different levels of penalization. And you can, as you can see, the mean square error is higher for high values of lambda or log of lambda if you want, and achieves the minimum at uh, the value of lambda equals to 0 0.05. So actually, it's a very small penalization that we, that we have here, uh, meaning that uh, we don't need a large penalization to improve uh, the mean square error. So here in the plot, you have these two dashed lines. The first one is the minimum, uh, so the minimum lambda that, um, or the lambda that achieves the minimum mean square error. And some authors say that you can go up to one standard deviation away from this lambda, because again, this is computed with cross-validation, so there's some error associated with it. And uh, some authors uh, uh, suggest that you can add a little bit more of, uh, of penalization uh, to be on the safe side. Uh, I was not able to find uh, the reference for this recommendation. It appears in several places saying some authors recommend this, but uh, I, was, I was not able to find exactly the uh, reference for the recommendation.
So another way of representing uh, uh, the, the effects of the penalization is to see how the, the penalization, penalization affects the estimation of the coefficient. And here I've represented what is called a path diagram. And you can see that when the, the penalization is close to zero, meaning that log of lambda is very, very negative, the values that you obtain are going to be very similar to the ordinary least square. So basically, we're not penalizing um, um, a lot. And the more you penalize, the more the coefficients are going to be shrunk towards zero. Okay, so if you if you let lambda be very high, every every coefficient ends up being um, quite small, quite close to zero. In actually, they don't reach zero; they just get smaller and smaller, closer to, to zero. But as you see, in as as we have seen in the previous plot, if the lambda is very high, uh, it, it defeats the purpose of the reach because the mean square error increases quite quite a lot. Okay, so again, don't forget that we try we are doing this to see if the trade-off between bias and, vi and variance uh, allows us to obtain uh, an estimator with smaller mean square error. So let me just uh, finalize with some notes about reach. Note that the predictors are in different scales. So each one of the predictors are measured in, in, in different units. And uh, that would mean that penalization, that again is controlled, penalization term is controlled by lambda, would affect different, differently the, the, the the predictors because the betas are dependent on the scale of the predictors and if I'm using the same penalization I'll be penalizing differently uh, the predictors according to, to their scale. So actually what we should be doing is doing this penalization with the predictors that are standardized. Okay, So standardized means uh, uh, taking the mean of the, 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 the variable and divided by the standard devi deviation and now you have a variable that has mean zero and standard deviation one. So we're going to make all the calculations with standardized uh, um, predictors. The the function that we, the, the, in the in the package GLMNet uh, does this by default. You can also uh, you can also turn turn it off, but by default it standardizes the, the the variables. But then the the final coefficients are returned in the correct scale, so it back transforms the the, the coefficients. Okay. So here I have the solution for the ridge regression and I've uh, added the ordinary square solution. So the, the model fitted with uh, you know, the usual uh, uh, LM command, linear model command. And it, as you can see, most of the coefficients are very similar. Uh, maybe the one that is a bit uh, different is, is this adipose that is uh, about uh, half and also the knee that it's uh, almost 10 times smaller. Uh, but aside of those coefficients that are already quite small, they are very, uh, the coefficients are, are very similar because the penalization that we've used is uh, also very small. So this is ridge regression. Uh, as I said, this does not uh, do any variable selection. Next, we're going to see an, an idea very similar to ridge uh, but that has embedded also a variable selection uh, procedure.